Well, I'm happy to say that we've got Guy Verhofstadt, the MEP, former chair of the Brexit Steering Committee in the European Parliament, former Prime Minister of Belgium, in the studio opposite me right now. We're going to spend the next 25 minutes with him. And if you have things to say to him, you can put them to him directly. He's smiling, but not with his eyes when I mention that. Uh, but let's go to Gareth and Matlock first. Gareth, you're on the air. Good morning. Good nice morning. to speak to you. Nice okay. to speak to Guy as well. That's great. Okay. Yeah. Well, because firstly, I'd like to correct a fallacy, and I've listened to your contributors this morning, and they're both very well spoken and good. But I, I'm approaching my three score birthday in November. So I've lived my whole life with the United Kingdom, more or less being a member of the European mm. Union. And I can't remember a time when we had a really good relationship with them. And, you know, one of the reasons I voted for Brexit, it wasn't because I've got a distaste for Europe or European countries, because I've lived in uh, one of them in France, and I love it there. But it's because I thought our relationship in the long term could be much better Mm. with an independent nation. And I'm already starting to see that we're redeveloping our relationships with Europe. Um, You know, Rishi's doing quite a good job. And I think this will continue. And I think we'll be respected better. You know, now we've got over these sort of divorce pains or we're starting to get over it. Nobody wants to re-enter that possibility. I think if Keir Starmer goes down the road of trying to reopen, rejoining the European Union, he'll end up like Neil Kinnock falling over on the beach in Brighton. Okay, He'll he'll have a real moment. Just, just, yeah, good point. Gareth, just one quick question to you. Would, if there was another vote today, would you, would you still vote to leave? I would. Well, we wouldn't be leaving because we're but if, already but if there was, out. Let's say you were, you know, but, but would you would you vote to continue being out? Yeah, I would because I think it would be a catastrophe because I think in the long run there's never going to be considerable tariffs on our trade with the European Union mm. because both us and the European Union will realise that like the European Union is forging trade relations with places like Japan, etc., it's always going to be better to have free trade. And I think this mm. temporary free trade agreement will actually continue. There might be a few little bits of tariff on the edges. But, I mean, the European Union is not going to want a situation where it can't import electric cars to the United Kingdom for the next decade. OK, well, let, uh, Gareth from Matlock, thank you very much for your call. Let's put on that to Guy Verhofstadt, who is sitting open-mouthed in front of me. Guy, what do you think, then? Is, is Gareth right? He doesn't... You know, we're better off, Britain is better off having a, a smooth and friendly relationship as an outsider with the European Union. And that ultimately, trade, frictionless trade will follow suit. Uh, that, that's not the reality on the ground. Uh, what I hear from uh, this, uh, this intervention, that's not the reality on the ground. The reality on the ground is that there are uh, huge problems uh, for for. For both, huh? for the European yeah. Union and, 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 and certainly for the British economy and the British industry. Because yeah, it, it has been a stupid thing, I think, to, to cut yourself off mm. from your main market and to, uh, to have all this red tape and all these uh, uh, import duties uh, as we see uh, today. Uh, and and uh, I, I, I don't understand what, uh, what is the lack of sovereignty uh, if you are in the single market. The single market, by the way, it's good to remember that, uh, was nearly an invention, I think. It's an of invention Margaret of Margaret Thatcher. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. It's, and Margaret Thatcher, you can say that's an icon of the Conservative Party. No? Right. So, and, and the whole thing, what happened during Brexit, if you go back a little bit in, in, in time, is that those who sold Brexit to the British public said during the Brexit referendum, no, no, we will not go out of the single market. Mm. And then once the results were in, they changed completely and they became extremists of Brexit. And mm. they said, you know, Brexit means uh, going out of, of, of And that was, that was so. Theresa May as prime minister. Who, no, no, who no, still, no, 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 Gulf, Gulf. Uh, but but, but Theresa May also, it. but she underwrote that. And I think the reason was that she was herself a reluctant Remainer. And she wanted to prove to her own party that she was a true, that she had become converted as a true Brexit here, yeah. and 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 she kind of guided us down that particular path. But let me put this to you: so, you know, the best hope that this country has of getting back in the European Union eventually is with the Labour Party. But even the Labour Party is touching is not touching this with a barge pole. They are very cautious, right? It's very incremental. It's very under the breath. Do you think they should be more outspoken? And if they were, would they actually have a good reception in Brussels? Well, I, I think they should be more outspoken, but I understand. I'm a politician, 
So right. at the end of his career. So I understand that for the moment, the most uh, um, political parties in Britain are the Lib Dems, uh, yeah. Labour and so on. So it's not only a question of Labour, it's also Lib Dems and, and are, are for tactical reasons. Yeah. Uh, not uh, not uh, even when in, in the, the recent poll, 61, 62 percent mm. uh, is in favour of rejoin. They don't want to touch us for tactical reasons. And why for tactical reasons? Because uh, the British voting system uh, the British parliamentary system is a tactical machine. Mm. Right? You you don't need to have a majority in a circumscription, in a constituency. You have to be the first uh, past the post. That's, mm. the, that's the principle. Sure. So tactics uh, play an enormous role. And I don't really expect uh, a change in uh, on, on all this uh, until the next general election are over. OK, so you're about to address that rejoin march in central London, right? That's yeah. what you're here for. What are you going to say to them? You're going to say, look, march very quietly and say it very no, softly no. in money. You just go home and have some lunch. No, no, I, I mean, did already. Uh, but, what, but if you shout from the hills about this, that no one really wants to touch, even Ed Davy, the leader of the Lib Dems who start their conference this weekend, their party conference, has said everyone's sick and tired of talking about Brexit. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. That's the reason why I explained to you that, uh, in my opinion, this is all tactics and, mm. and, and, and not what they really think and what they really, uh, their feelings are. No, I, I'm going uh, to speak about uh, the statute before me, about Winston yeah. Churchill, uh, and, and, and saying, look, uh, uh, he looked to Britain from the outside world and he knew that the outside world uh, had changed and that was a, a huge, uh, a huge uh, opportunity to create peace on the continent mm. by creating new Europe and the European Union. He was in favor uh, of, of, of that. And our current leaders are all looking uh, yeah, it, to Britain from, from inside mm. uh, and, and, and not from the outside world. And they don't understand that there is, in fact, a world has been born now the last years certainly with the brutal invasion uh, of Russia uh, in Ukraine, uh, which, uh, which will be a brutal world uh, in which Europe needs to be united. Mm. U- Europe needs to be uh, yeah, together. Otherwise, we will not play any role anymore. So regain sovereignty goes through Europe and through the European Union, in my okay. opinion. So uh, Keir Starmer said that he wants to renegotiate aspects of the trade agreement sector by sector. Is that even realistic? I mean, are there people, you know, in the German car industry, you know, in agriculture in France who are going to say, yes, sector and by sector, because yeah, to many it sounds a little like bit that. like... So there's cherry picking. You well, know cherry the picking. The, the, you know so the cherry is, picking it, discussion. Yeah, okay, we know about cherry picking. You don't, you don't, you may like cherries, but you don't like them being no, picked. Exactly. Okay, mm-hmm. so is Keir Starmer barking up the wrong tree here? No, is I he think, being delusional? No, like I say, uh, said a, a few moments ago, that it's all tactical for uh, for the moment, and 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 the real uh, discussion, the real debate will start after the next general election, and then the European Union will have his normal. Uh, we are very much in favour to have a, a, a full fledged, a good uh, relationship uh, with Britain. Uh, everybody's in favour of that, and that goes if on economics, eh, on economics mm. that goes through a customs union and a single market and a sherry picking. So you would just. just just to be clear, you would welcome Britain eventually rejoining the, the customs union in the single yeah, market. Uh, absolutely. That was one of the options on the table right. during the whole yeah. Brexit negotiations. And, and, and I got many people who uh, said, yeah, Norway, Switzerland, that is the example and so on. Uh, and, and, and why not if that is the choice? The choice has not to be made by the Europeans. The choice has to be made by mm. the British uh, people, by the British citizens. Okay. They made the first choice. It's clear now that it is the wrong one. I think that it's obvious. Not to everyone. Not to no, 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 just, no, there are 38 who are not in just wait agreement. A second. Let's there just bring 62. in Catherine. Mm-hmm. Catherine from Ealing has something to say. Oh. Catherine, you're on the air. Oh, yeah. Hello. Thanks for taking my call. Um, yes, well, um, I'd just like to follow on from what um, the speaker was saying about needing to have a united front in Europe towards the Ukraine situation. And in actual fact, I don't think we have that. I'm glad that we have left um, the European Union because we've been able to pursue our own line with Ukraine and give them tremendous help. Well, yeah, but so is it, so have the Germans and the French and the, what yeah. are you talking about? I mean, the, well, you know, the, I'm talking the, about Hungary. Well, Hungary, Hungary, well, that, that's a good point. Okay, actually, that's a really good point, Catherine. Thank you very much. Okay, so the, the Germans have given tons of money and weapons. You know, yeah. the French have done the I same, the Italians slightly uh-huh. less. Then you've got the awkward squad, right? You've got Hungary, 
right? You've got, you might have the Slovaks very much on the no, Russian no, side. No, no, Slovaks not. Slovaks but soon after the election. Bit, but you have Austria, and Poland, Austria, 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 and Poland right. has just said uh, no more weapons because of the grain issue. Yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's okay, another but issue. So, but a, a United, uh, it's clear that without the American help, yeah. without the American intervention, let's be honest about mm. that, it was already over this war and yeah. Russia had overtaken the whole of Ukraine. That's the reality. And yeah. that's because the weakness of Europe. It, it's true that uh, Wallace did his thing. Yeah. Wallace, and the, the previous Wallace. Uh, yeah. uh, Minister of Defense. Yeah. And, and it's true that now the Germans and the French and everybody does something. Uh, but that is, uh, imagine one moment that Trump comes back in America yeah. and that Trump says, well, oh, I don't want to continue the policy of Biden. Biden don't want to help U right. Ukraine anymore, then Russia will win this war immediately because so, of the weakness and the division in Europe. That's one of the reasons so we need So you agree with Europe. Catherine, on, Catherine from Ealing, who just called in? Well, what, what, what we need is, is to have a real European defence union the fastest as possible. You know, how, what, what we spent in Europe on defence mm. with Britain, uh, with Britain, it's more than 300 billion yeah. euro or nearly 300 <laughs> billion uh, pound a year. Yeah. That's that's four or five times more than the Russians. Mm. But we are not capable to help the Ukrainians. Because it's not in, in, united. In, in, uh, yeah. Because it's not the United. And why it is? Because we are spending more or less 30, 40 percent of the American uh, military budget. Mm. But we can only do 10 percent of the operations mm. of the American army. Because of what? Duplication, duplication, duplication. Mm. It's, so uh, we are the second bit together with Britain and the whole European Union, is the second biggest military organization yeah. uh, package, I should say, yeah. bigger than the Chinese. And okay. we are not capable to support alone uh, Ukraine without the help of the Americans. Guy, I mean, the, there, is a, there is a feeling here in London that even if the European Union were to cut us some slack, and even if we could actually grasp the political nettle of nuzzling up to the EU again, Ultimately, they don't want, you don't want the awkward squad back in your midst. No, that, that, that's, that's, that's not true. That's not true. That's not what I feel in Brussels right. and in Strasbourg yeah. and inside uh, the, the, the... Are you saying you're missing us? I, in a certain way, yes. I, I'm missing a lot of things. <laughs> I'm missing... Uh, uh, the British humour uh, oh, around you, the table. That hasn't died out. You can no, still no, get no, that. Okay, but you that, have to come to... Uh, yeah, or, 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 or so there are uh, a, a number of things. Also culturally. So yeah. Britain, that's one of the legs, I should say, one of the arms of the European Union. And that's like you miss a, uh, a leg, you miss a, an arm. That, mm. That's 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 a fee. So finally, th there will be a very positive uh, reaction, certainly, if, uh, if there is again a, a positive uh, um, vote, I would mm. say, on Brexit uh, during a referendum. I, I don't expect it now. My, my feeling is more that a whole new generation uh, needs to come in in British politics before it, uh, uh, it will happen. Do you expect the Labour Party, if they win the next election, and if they do so because they've been very tactical and very cautious and quiet, possibly silent about Brexit, do you expect them to make strides towards some kind of new relationship with the EU once they're in power? I think, I think so. That is what... Uh, what uh, uh, what Starmer already announced in a certain way by going—is that what to, you're hearing privately as well? Uh, what what that is this, the general feeling? Yeah, uh, mm. that that will be another another way of uh, uh, of relationship, another relationship, and then yeah, everything depends on how strong. Uh, the, 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 the push is here uh, by the public opinion uh, to oblige then this mm. uh, new government to organize new reforms. But let, let's be honest, I don't expect it immediately even in, in the coming years, but it's obvious that in, 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 in a decade of now, in two decades of now, the world will be so different. We will be confronted with uh, India, China, the, mm. the US as, as big, big, big uh, what they already are, uh, uh, economies, technology, uh, also technological. There but is, is it also not possible that if there is some kind of concerted political move to rejoin something in the next 10 years' time, that the European Union then might actually be a club that many people, even those who are pro-European, may not want to join? If you have President Marine Le Pen in France, you have an F AFD chancellor in Germany, which is not inconceivable. You know, you have a far-right government in Italy. You've got, you know, Poland, uh, Hungary, possibly Slovakia after the next election, you know, and others moving to the far-right or further to the right. And also no longer 
fully believing in the European project. A lot of these people, like Orban, are very happy to take your money, yeah, right? that, that's but they're the hollowing out. He's interested in. They're hollowing out the European Union from within. Yeah, that's a, one of the reasons that we need also to to change to reform the Union. But what I have seen is that after Brexit, uh, you know Farage. Uh, yeah. We all know I him. Know, I remember the guy. Yeah, uh, Nigel my, uh, Farage. Uh, used to work and and on he, this show. he predicted Program. he predicted that Channel. there would be exits uh, in in the four corners of the of the Union. And it didn't yeah. happen. He, and it didn't happen at all. There was he said an exit and a frexit and a dexit yeah. uh, the Danish going out and so on and so on and nothing of all this and on the country one of the only positive things of Brexit has yeah. been that we have seen on the continent yeah. A sort of a reaction by the public opinion saying, yeah, 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 we have also some criticism toward the European Union, but we are not so stupid as the Brits to leave it. That was a general reaction. But and will that, that last when you've got people like Viktor Orban, who's very happy to take EU funds to line you know, his pockets and his government's pockets, but is really kind of quibbling with the EU agenda on a daily basis. You've got the Polish government that has picked a fight with the European Union and, and turns those fights into political currency. And the others that I've yeah, mentioned. But that, that this, President of France, that Marine it, Le Pen, if it happens, that yeah, would be a big deal. Right? That, will, that will change. I, I, I don't think, for example, in Poland, we will see what the outcome of yeah. the elections is uh, in, in, in the coming weeks. But the fact that you have a, a Polish government uh, making things difficult doesn't change the enormous pro-European sentiment yeah. that exists in Poland. And, and even uh, under the people who are voting for the, mm. for the peace for the conservative government. And the case of Orban, well, Orban has... Well, and, and I, I think we need to do that, has to choose. Or he stays inside and he accepts also the values and the mm. principles of the union. Oh, he goes out. Yeah. You cannot continue. That's one of the big weaknesses, I think. You are, you are right of, of the union uh, with a member state who is only there for the money and, and, and who don't like uh, the values, uh, the, the, the principles, uh, the rule of law and, and so on. What about Ukraine? Ukraine's fast track membership. We've seen with the grain issue and Poland that there is a real fear amongst European farmers, not just Polish farmers, but also French farmers and perhaps Belgian farmers, that if that grain superpower of Ukraine, that grain basket is allowed into the European Union, it would undercut prices. They would gobble up a lot of entitlements uh, in the ah, common agricultural that, that, policy. And that is a real obstacle. That, that can be an obstacle, but there are, we, we can find solutions for that. The agricultural policy uh, is... is, is uh, is not a cheap uh, uh, policy, but it, it stabilizes markets uh, inside, uh, uh, inside Europe. Mm. And I'm very much in favor for a fast track uh, procedure towards Ukraine because there is more at stake than Ukrainian grain. What yeah. is at stake is uh, the, the, the future of the world, yeah. the, fu the future of democracy on the European continent. Yeah. And because it's obvious that Putin, if he wins in Ukraine, there will be a next uh, mm. attack, a next war, a war against one of the Baltic mm. states, against Poland uh, and, and against you really think that's democracy. Possible? That's possible, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, stay there. Let's bring in Delroy from Brixton. Delroy, you've got a, a minute and then we're going to get uh, Guy, Guy's reaction to what you've got to say. Uh, sorry, who is your guest? I don't know. Guy Verhofstadt, and... former president hmm? of the European Parliament, um, former Prime Minister of Belgium. Sorry, I've never heard of you, uh, sir. Okay. Uh, but, you know, what, what I was <laughs> sorry, say, Guy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Belgian, He's a household name of the Verhofstadt household, for goodness sake. Go on. Go on. No. Saint Paul, wow, that's the only thing I know. Okay, about. all right, come on. Yeah, what, got... I was, what, what I think <laughs> I'm really concerned. I think Keir Starmer should not have made any any references whatsoever to potential to draw either rejoin the EU or even. Well, he hasn't uh, really. He's not. He's he's not talking about rejoining. Is no, he? but he's back. No, but we're talking about it. And the thing mm. is, this should be. An, we've got a cost of living crisis. With respect, we have a cost of living crisis. Everybody is way more concerned about putting food on the table, heating their homes this winter, than all this ideological claptrap that you and your guests are talking about today. Yes, it's very nice to have Matt, but not now is not the time. And if Labour want to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Go ahead, keep talking about this. Right, okay, thanks, I Dora. I, to be fair, they're not, they are not talking, I mean, they, are, they want to talk about cost of living and all the other issues. They don't really But the cost of living that. crisis is also due, yeah. so, sorry, yeah. uh, in, in partially to, to, to what's happening, uh, happened with Brexit. Mm. Uh, if, 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 uh, if it goes uh, um, bad in, 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 in the car industry, it goes bad in the fishery, if it goes, goes bad in a number of other mm. uh, activities in, in, in Britain, that, that, that creates 
rates, yeah, uh, lower growth and higher inflation. So mm. it's it's uh, it's a little bit easy to say, oh, you have uh, the question of Europe and the future of Britain in Europe. That's completely uh, separate uh, from uh, from our economic uh, uh, successes. That's not true. It's linked one to the other, and mm. maybe a certain part of inflation in Britain yeah. is linked to Brexit.